The Earnestly Speaking Podcast is a show that is founded on free-flowing conversation and may at times venture into mature subjects. Listener discretion is advised. Yeah, Earnestly Speaking Podcast. Let's get it. I'm a giant in New York, in Miami carry heat. So much more in store, my product can flood the street. Opinion Nation, Godfather, CEO. Pop in the late 90s, gon' see me blow. Oh. Got my hustle on, no imitation of that. Army of untouchables, Opinion Nation staff. Never went on season, homie. Check the numbers. Heart drop in my own right, supply your southern comfort. Earnestly speaking, my ego is well fed. Earnestly speaking, you're too feeble and no threat. See him like a hurricane. You're a mild breeze. Earnestly speaking, leaving Eli a dynasty. Shame. First Week Podcast. Coming to you June 19th, 2024. It is Juneteenth Day. And I'm celebrating Juneteenth there with my man, Danny G. Now NBA champion, Boston Celtics fan. <laughs> right. Aren't you happy? Look at you. Look at oh, the smile. Yeah. I'm I, happy, know, man. We did this podcast around the same time last year after the, the Celtics came back from old three. We the did. Heat. We and did. And you were, you were so dis, dis, disgruntled the team and the future and all this stuff. And Yep. And what what, what a difference a year makes, huh? And I, I'm pretty sure I think I told you what they need to do. Yeah, get rid and of the certain guys. And they did that. They did it. Shout, anyway, shout. How, how do you feel? How do you how, how do you feel if you're Grant Williams right now? Where both teams, you know, you you're both your previous teams are both in the finals, and you got literally traded because you were a pain in the ass from the Dallas Mavericks. Yeah. Did did did, did he play in the series at all? Did he play what? Did he play in the series at all? Because he got traded. No, Dallas. He traded uh, Grant Williams got traded from Dallas to. That's Houston. right. I, 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 see, that, that, that's the whole point, though. Yeah. He was so relevant this year. I forgot that. Yeah. Yep. You know. I, I know he got yeah. traded to Dallas, you know, last summer, but yeah. I forgot he got traded from, from away from Dallas to another team. Totally forgot yeah. that because it doesn't matter. Yeah, that, yeah, that, they get traded. It literally came out that you know it's because the players on the team just didn't like him. Ooh. It was that's literally a, that, it was a pain in the ass. They traded him because he was a pain in the ass. So they call that a bitter bitter pill to swallow, if you will. Yeah, yeah, I and I mean, so. you know, it's funny because he was apparently he was at uh, the game the other night. Mm-hmm. And um, I don't know, some reporter apparently talked to Grant Williams and he said, well, I didn't want to go on the court with the team during during, during the, you know, during the celebration of like that. So I kind of waited until afterwards to be able to congratulate all of them. No, so, I saw I saw footage actually of him and a couple of other guys in the locker room to, uh, to you know, to greet the players after. Yeah. Yeah. So, that, yeah but still, you know, you weren't part of this team. You have nothing to do with this. They were better off, you know, you know. They, 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 he was the biggest one. That, I mean, Marcus Smart need to go too, but he was but the biggest. Like, one. But, but he was, he was less of a problem. He was more so. Yeah, just a, 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 like, I, like I told you back then, the problem is, is that you know, Smart and Williams held Tatum and Brown back yeah. because they wanted the spotlight, and they would try to take the spotlight away and try to take. They took they they took shots away from those guys. Yeah. And literally, and 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 you know, Grant Williams, especially with the way he complains to the referee, like he's a superstar. You know, you know, I thought I think they just hurt him. And then you know, you know, you 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 get rid of those two guys. You know, mm-hmm. then you swing a trade and you bring in Drew Holiday for um, another pain in the neck that they had to get rid of was Mark, uh, Brogdon, who you know that trade worked out glowingly because they ended up getting rid of him and Williams, who both ended up hurt this year. Yep. You know, Drew Holiday and then Marcus Smart for Porzingis. I mean, President Brad Stevens doing the damn thing. He, he, you know, I mean, a lot of people want to give Danny Ainge some credit for this too. And you can give Danny Ainge credit for drafting Tatum and drafting Brown. That's where it ends. Oh, no, no, that's where it ends. That's where it ends. Brad Stevens did the rest. He brought Al Hawford back. He traded for Derek White. He traded for Porzingis. He traded for Drew Holiday. You know, and he's re-signed all these guys. It's 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 more Brad Stevens than it was Danny Ainge at this point. What do you what do you make of the people talking about the, the narratives about the Celtics this year? You know, obviously they were the best team in basketball from, from pillar to post. Um, but the breaks they got, you know, all the way through the finals, not necessarily the finals, but at least the first three rounds, you know, the Heat yeah. having Jim Butler for the first didn't play a single minute the first uh 
the first round. Then you got yeah. Don Mitchell, who, the best player in the Cavs, who misses half the series. Then you got Terry's Halliburton, who misses half the series. Yeah. Um, so basically, all the best players have been compromised or didn't play at all in, in these three rounds. You know, I I said, you know, and I'll I'll admit too, I'll, I'll send the sword too. Like there's always that what if situation. Like Boston was always really really good. We always knew that. Hell, I picked them when the title before the year started. Um, but it's always these what if situations because they were such a one trick pony most of the year where they were historically great shooting team. But you yeah. knew if they weren't hitting shots, that was a problem. Yeah. And even throughout the playoffs, it was, my, my fear was, well, they're a great team, obviously, but if they if, if they rely on that too much, that it could be a problem going forward and they run, run to the wrong team. But I don't know. Boston, you know, they they, they were kind of the under, they weren't the underdogs in the series against Dallas, but it sometimes, sometimes felt like it was. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So this is how I look at it. Okay. One, you can't help who you're playing. Yeah. Right. If they had gone seven games, six games, seven games, six or seven more games to win it all, then I would have been like, all right, they got lucky because those other guys were hurt. But, yes, there were players missing in those series, but with the exception of the slip-up in game two against Miami, mm -hmm. and slip-up in game two two against Cleveland, a pattern. <laughs> game four in, in Dallas, which I'm not counting because I, I got a feeling yeah. they, they mailed that in from the beginning. If you yeah. just watch the game, yeah, they went out there, they tried, they realized they didn't have it, and they mailed it in. It's almost like they wanted to clinch it at home on, on, yeah. on Monday. So if, if, if they hadn't rolled through the playoffs, then I would say, all right, maybe they were a little lucky because, you know, realistically, a bounce here, a bounce there, if those teams were all the full, fully, um, you know, full, full strength, then it's one thing. But they rolled through. They rolled through. I mean, you know, Indiana played them tough, but realistically, you know, they weren't in any of those games except for Game One, where Boston pull, pulled it out. You know, so I, I I don't take anything away from them at all. I I don't think you can. Um, if anything, let's let's you know they beat the team that eliminated the the, the Mavericks and the Timberwolves, who were two That's of the true. best. Who were two of the best team? You know, they eliminated the Mavericks, eliminated the Timberwolves and the um, Thunder. Right back to back, right, right. You know, and the Clippers. So they also, they they, also beat the team who beat the team that beat the champs. <laughs> exactly. So, so yeah. you, you know, you got to give you got to give them some credit. So you can't help it. And the way they're all professionals, you know, they're all professionals. So like the, the narrative around here was always like, you know, anytime they lost a game it was like, you know, the, the the ceiling's higher. What the guys used to say, the ceiling's higher than that. It's higher than that. All right, they won eighty games all year. They lost twenty one. I think I think I think they did okay, and they, they they won a championship, and it's a championship. It doesn't matter how many, how many, um, you know, who you played or whatever. I mean, we're not taking away the Patriots, um, Super Bowls, right? When mm -hmm. they won the first three by just a field goal, you know what I mean? And right. then the fourth one, if Malcolm Butler doesn't make that interception, there's the one right there. They were down 28 to 3 in his fifth one, which was an incredible comeback. And yeah. then, you know, the, the last one in 2018 was was a, was up. I mean, they won. My team won, but it was a boring game. They won 13 to 3. So, you know, those some of those Patriots teams were very dominant, but they didn't roll through the roll through the playoffs like like the like yeah. the Celtics just did. So yeah. a championship's a championship. It doesn't matter who who you play or how how you do it, whatever. Because you know Denver won last year, but apparent, but Denver had an easier road than than, than the Celtics did this year. Hmm. Um, Jason Tatum, the narratives. Uh, we just we discussed this throughout the year last year, hell, even two years ago. Um, I've told you my first question with Jason Tatum in terms of where I put him in the pecking order of the best players in the league. He's certainly a top ten player. No one's going to dispute that. I told you last year at the same time last year where like I wasn't sure the top five player just because I wasn't sure you know. Like I, what was what was the thing I always said I said to you like if he had Gene Butler's heart he'd be the best friend in basketball yeah like, he, he, no one questions the talent no one questions the talent the guy the guy's phenomenal yeah. it's a talent but it's just that there's an extra something missing and it always felt like even throughout this this year and even through the playoffs too also it felt like even when he scores thirty points in a game it never felt like he put a stamp on it like he got thirty but it was like oh you know, cool I'll explain why I'll explain why? because he never hits that shot at the end. You know right. what I mean? Like when they've got that 15 point lead, he doesn't hit that three to make the crowd go crazy and stuff like right. that. So, but what I'll say this is he took a step forward this year that people aren't talking about. Okay. Is I truly feel he helped make Jalen Brown a better player. 
Mm-hmm. He's helped make the guys around him better. Um, he took the pressure off a lot of guys. Like, you know, Drew Holiday got to be able to come here and just play his game and not have to worry about scoring 20 points a night and, and stuff like that. Um, you look at Tatum's numbers overall. I mean, he averaged, I want to say, it was at least six assists a game, and I want to mm-hmm. say close to eight or nine rebounds a game this year. Yeah. So I think he became a complete player, and he's getting his teammates more involved, which is what the great ones do. Yeah, of course. You know, Jordan. Jordan made everybody around him better. Magic made everybody around him better. Larry. You know, Jokic makes yeah. the guys around him better, you know? But it felt like those guys, but those, but those guys you mentioned, though, like Jordan and Magic and those guys, it felt yeah. like when you watch those guys play, like, they left a stamp. Like, you knew, forget yes. the numbers, just a step. You just knew, right. oh, that was Jordan's game. That was Magic's game or whatever. Yeah. LeBron's yeah. game. Going to throw LeBron in there, too. LeBron, too. Oh, yeah, 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 of course. I, I total tangent topic, but I feel like LeBron doesn't get the love that he deserves. Well, that's a whole other different that's conversation. A whole, <laughs> that's a whole yeah. show. That's a whole right. other show. Oh, absolutely. But, uh, but no, I don't think Tatum has gotten to that level yet. Give him a couple more championships, and he's there. So I ask you this, this Tatum, because I, I, if you ask right now to rank, rank him in, in the league, I might ask you to put him on the spot to do this. Um, so before the year started, I had number six, best player yep. in the league coming to the year. I, I, to me, it's it's one of those things where like he's right on the fringe. Yep. Should be top five, not quite there yet because the same thing I told you. And even with the title this year. I, I'm still in that same spot. Like, yeah, he's still right in that fringe, oh, yeah. but I just don't know if his top five is definitive. Like, if someone says he's top five, but I'm not, not number five, I'm not going to dispute it. It's like, okay, well, it's cool. Yeah. But yeah. it doesn't feel definitive with Jason Tatum. Yeah, I mean, you know, you got you got, you got, your, you got Jokic, obviously, who's the best Jokic. player in the league overall. Um, Giannis. Giannis, yeah, after that. And then a lot of people throw Luka in there, but I don't. I, you don't, I don't. Oh, you're not, not a Luka guy? No, I am a Luka guy, but I just don't, I don't think he's better than Tatum, and I think this shit this series. Ooh, is I think this series, he's, he's not better than Tatum. I don't think no. Certainly, certainly a weird series for Luka yeah. in terms of his conditioning yeah. is an issue. Yeah, you know what though, it is. It, he's always played like that. You know what I mean? You know, he, I agree. I mean, if you, if, I bet you, if he dropped ten pounds, he probably, of course, is going to be a better player. But he does just fine the way he is. <laughs> yeah, there's a bit, of, know, a, bit, of, a, bit of a turnstile on defense though. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I, I'd put Tatum in the top five, personally. Okay. I, would, I, would, yeah. I would put him in the top five. But, so, um, mm-hmm. you know, it's boring. I mean, I think after Jokic and maybe Giannis, after that, it's kind of a scramble, if you think about it. Yeah, there is. There's definitely a scramble there. I, I, I told you everything there. And, and again, if if you want to say number five, I'm not arguing with you about that. I, yeah. I, I, think, I think he might be there. Yeah. I'm just saying it doesn't feel definitive. That's all I'm saying. That no. being said, um... In the case of like this playoff run and this finals, Jalen Brown was the best player in the team. He was. He definitely was. And I that's one thing I feel like Jalen Brown lives for the big moment more than Tatum does. But yeah. Tatum's personality isn't isn't the upfront stand up guy. It's not what he is. You know, he's not gonna he he's come out we recently and just said it. You know what I mean? He's like he's not gonna be the guy that he's not the rah rah guy. You know, you know, he's right. gonna lead by example. And 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 that and that's what I think that's what he does. Um, as far as the playoffs go, yeah, you're 100 percent right. Jalen Brown was so consistent throughout the whole playoffs, which is why I think he got the finals MVP. Because I think they kind of they looked at it kind of like as hockey does. You know what I mean? Where the winner of usually the Conn Smythe trophy will right. go to the best player overall for, for, for the playoffs for the team. I feel like that's kind of how the NBA did it this year. They they voted they they lead more towards Brown because he was so consistent throughout the playoffs. Right. It did such a good job for them. Because I mean, realistically, if you ask me who the MVP of the finals was, it was Drew Holiday. Hands down. Ooh. 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 Hands down. Yeah. He definitely should got some votes. I will say that. Hands um, down. Hands and down. I, and I will say right, even though Tatum did all the little things. And even though Tatum what did have a couple three point games in the series, I do think when when the playoff when the series was in the balance, the first three games but it was still questions without Boston winning the series or not. Jalen Brown was, was, the best, was the best player when he needed to be. He was. He was. Tatum had, Tatum's points were quiet. They right. were quiet. You know, like, I didn't even realize he had 31 in, the, in, the, in game five. Right. I didn't realize that. So. But that's, see, that's, that's what I'm saying. That's, that's the thing. It doesn't but, feel like. Exactly. You know, but, it, but the thing is, though, it talks about the beauty of the team as it was a team. 
It really was. And that's how they played all year. I mean, there were games this year where, you know, even in that finals game, you know, Sam Hauser hitting three, hitting threes mm-hmm. at the end of the game. You know, Pritchett hitting that big three. That was the dagger right there at halftime. You know, he hit that three, put him up by 21. That was it. That's when I said, all right, I washed my hands of it. This game is done. So. So this time last year we were discussing the coaching situation because Joe Mazzula had just taken over, you know, yeah. Larry with well, for training camp yeah. after the whole Emi Adoka situation. Yeah. Obviously you had the really good season, then the really weird playoff run and all that. And there was a lot of questions about Joe, Joe Mazzula's future. Obviously it stuck with him. Yeah. Is Joe Mazzula redeemed now after, after this run? Has he been um, yeah, he is. But, you know, um, <clears throat> again, he was thrown into a tough spot. You know, there's no chance of bringing in, you know, any assistance. They, 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 they went out and they got him some really good assistants this year. Obviously one of them leaving for Charlotte, Charles Lee took the Charlotte yeah. job. Mm-hmm. Um, Sam Cassell is still here and he'll probably still be here. He'll be the top assistant. That um, guy should, have, should be head coach somewhere. I know why he's not. Oh, I absolutely. I don't think so. He was, so, he, 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 you know, it, it's kind of like Eric Bieniemy. You know, I was, I mean? I was just going to say that. I was just going to say that. something on him, which is stopping it. Yeah. I don't understand why he's not a head coach or hasn't been, but he, um, so bringing in, I think, some guys that can kind of ground him because Mazul is one of those young um, numbers guys. You yeah. know what I mean? And, and he's and he's really smart. We listen to him talk, and he's he's really socially awkward, so he kind of comes off rude a lot. But I think he's more of a numbers guy, and I think that by bringing in some basketball guys, they grounded him, and they showed him that, you, yes, you can rely on the numbers, but you've also got to know when to call a timeout. You've got to know when to um, call a specific play. Right. And you could tell. It was Missoula's team. And, I mean, when Wick Grosbeck took the trophy, he mm-hmm. Missoula was the first person he mentioned. Like, you know, let's give this guy some credit. He 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 held us all together this year. And, I mean, bottom line, he's Tatum's guy. That's Tatum's yeah. guy. So, yeah. And yeah. Missoula, and it, Missoula's actually from, like, two towns over from me in Rhode Island. So. Oh wow! Okay, and, and again, when you have when you have that the support from the star player like that, yeah, you're 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 pretty much locked in. Yeah, yeah. like I said, I, I'm glad for for the Celtics' sake. I'm glad they stuck with it because look, you see, look look, look today, Monty Williams, five hundred prisons, the one year. Like, well, look, maybe there's more that we don't know beyond just what happened on the court last year. But at the same time, it's like, you know, stability stability matters, man. Stability, stability matters. matters. But then when you you know, but you but when you change when you change the boss. You know what I mean, and then you tell the boss you got to keep the coach. Eh, mm-hmm. You know, yeah. it's you're not really the boss. Yeah. So that that's what. But I agree. I mean, you you want you know, if I'm Monty Williams, I go and I I I don't take a job anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I do TV. So, oh, that's a lot TV. of money he's getting there too. Yeah. Because at the I time will. he because at, at the time he signed a contract, he was actually the highest paid coach in history of basketball. Yeah. At the time, so a lot of money. I think sixty five million dollars still owed to him. Yes. You know, so yeah, that's crazy. It's crazy. But so, I'll, mm-hmm. so a lot of the uh, narrative I've heard too, also not even before the finals ended, was that this Celtic team was historically one of the greatest teams of all time. Like, and, and now they won a title. We can actually now assess that. Um, and I, I, th- I think Gary Washburn from the, from the Globe actually had wrote a piece prior to the start of the finals, saying that the numbers bear it out. That basically. Obviously speaking, this is the most efficient basketball team in the history of, of the NBA. And I push back on that because, yeah, I yeah, I, I get that. This team, but this team doesn't feel like a historically great team. And the reason why I said that is because number one was the Celtics in that list of, of the greatest offensive awesome team of all, all time. Number two on the list, though, was the Pacers team. They just beat in the, in the conference finals. And clearly, they're not a top five team all time either. Oh, so, no, they, I mean, yeah, so, yeah. so like my thing is this. The, it, does you've been a Celtic fan all your life? My question to you, uh, Danny, is this: Does this Celtic team feel like an all-time great team? Not yet. No, not yet. It's one of my favorite teams of all time because I like yeah. the players. You know, um, I still think the 08 Celtics team is is better than this one for I now. So. Um, if this team wins another championship, if this group core group wins another one, then they're going to sur- definitely surpass that. Yeah. So I um. You know, because these guys are still young. That's the thing. This, you know, the, the the Pierce, Garnett, Ray Allen, that was a veteran team. You know? It was a borrowed time. Yeah. These guys are still young. You know, they're all in their prime. You know, Tatum, Brown, you know, oh, Holiday's the oldest guy. Holiday's like 33 or 34. And I think he's seven years older than Tatum, Brown, 
Porzingis is 28. You know, um, you know, Pritchett and Hauser are in their early 20s. You know, it's Derek White's 28 years old. I mean, this, you know, and Horford. Horford's, Horford's the old man. But I mean, overall, this this core is is isn't going anywhere. And if they if they if they put together another, you know, if they win, say they win, you know, one over the next, you know, they win two out of three over, you know, cost a couple years. I put them up there, you know. You know, it's different. I mean, and you know, they talk about you talk about you know the offensive efficiency and all this other stuff. It's so different now than it was. Yeah. You know, and you know, back with the, the great Celtics teams and the great Lakers teams, and even you go to the, the Jordan and the Bulls and you know yeah. all those teams. None of those teams had a seven footer that could shoot from the three. That can that, that can shoot fifty percent from three pointers. Like now, it's mm-hmm. different. It's a different game, you know. So offensive efficiency back then was it was a lot of two pointers. Now with the three pointers, because they maybe they're getting more points on less shots or whatever. Maybe that that skews the numbers. But I don't go right. by any of that. I, and that's I what go, I go by what my eyes see. And that's and that's why I was saying like when the fact that you have this Celtics number one all time efficiency wise. But at number two is the Pacers team. That was a six seed this year. You yeah. know, <laughs> that, should have, that should really should have lost to New York in the second exactly. playoffs. So, you, know, it, you know, it's almost like why you you just you you just contradicted yourself, <laughs> Gary. Exactly. Yes, there's it's, more and more. There's more numbers. There's, there's more yeah. context in there. But that being said, you mentioned last thing I'll ask you about the Celtics quick. You mentioned you know obviously this team and they could win two and three years whatever it may be. I think this team's chance of repeating are very high. Let me tell you why. Because their rails, at least right now, look, things can change in in this offseason with the draft. Obviously, I don't see I don't see any draft any teams in the draft making things really massively that tilt the championships conversation. Free agency could change some things depending depending on what teams do. What you know, yeah. Sixers could do something maybe the Knicks are maybe we'll see what happens there. But it feels like I feel like you know I came I came out last year saying that Denver chances of repeating a wing two out of three, whatever, it was, was pretty high because of the same reason I like Boston's yeah. chances too. Mm-hmm. Their core four is yeah. together for at least three, no, three years. Yeah. Boston's core entire team is back next yeah. year, no matter what. Yeah. And Boston has the inherent advantage now of having an easier conference, an easier rail to the, at least to get to the finals. They do. So yeah. at the very least, the, the Celtics rail, you know, trucks to the finals, easier. Than Denver because Denver has played in the West, a conference. Yep. And you saw this year, they ran all problems, lost yep. to Minnesota in seven games. Yep. Give me a percent of chances that the, the Celtics repeat next year. Uh, 50. It's, it's, it, it, yeah. because it, it's very hard. Can they do, do I think they'll finish number one? Yes. In the conference mm-hmm. again? Yes. Yes. Do I think they'll make it as far as the conference finals again? Yes, I do. But to repeat is, it, it's hard. It, it, it's hard. You know what I mean? It, it, it's, I mean, and, you know, Tatum and Holiday are playing this summer in the Olympics. So they're going to be, you know, a little tired there. And so we'll see, you know, they, they have a shot. They definitely have a, have a very good shot, but we'll, we'll have to wait and see how that goes. I don't know. I mean, repeating is hard. Like, you know, watching Denver play, Jokic was gassed. He was just, yeah. he was, he was, he was exhausted. Like he just, he couldn't, he couldn't give anymore. So we'll see. We'll see. I mean, but, you know, the, the whole team's apparently coming back. But you're right. You don't know what's going to happen. I mean, you know, the, the, the Heat trade Jimmy Butler? Did they ship him to the no, Lakers? No, that doesn't happen. No, that doesn't happen. No, you know? no, 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 no. That's not happen. No, no. There's always, there's always chatter about stuff, but no. Yeah. Also, he wants to stay in Miami, too, on top of that. But, no, I think I, I, I'm with you. To get to the, to win the finals, I put it at 50-50 because I think the conference, they have the rails to get there. I yeah. think to win to win the East, obviously. I'm putting a, a three quarters, eight percent, honestly, because I think yeah. the only teams in the East that can really make some noise, that can challenge Boston, is this, if the Sixers make a move. Let's say they get to Paul George, and yeah. somehow that team keeps the core together. But then again, you have the issues with Embiid, his injuries. Yeah. New York should get better, but are, are they as good as Boston? The no. Knicks, if the Knicks can get somebody, they're going to be tough, right? Um, Depending on other, who they give up. Depending I who mean, they give up. Right. The, uh, the obvious answer is Milwaukee. That's yeah. the obvious answer because you have Giannis. You yeah, have they, 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 they get old though. Yeah, but they, but they're also I, I think the windows honestly is one more year. I think yeah. if, if, if I think the Bucks fail next year, I think Giannis may ask for trade. Yeah, you're right. He's getting, he's, he's, he's getting he's, more, he's, more vocal now. He's, he's what twenty seven. He's not 28, that old. Twenty seven, twenty eight. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but like he's his, been league twenty years. But because his because his because his skill set is not as expansive as Durant yeah. is. His yeah. peak is gonna be a lot smaller. Yeah, that's true. So that he his window is a lot smaller than I think most most other stars in the league. 
So, yeah. but yeah, I'm with you on that one. The Celtics 50 chance could at least win the finals next year. Um, okay. Um, let's talk Pats real quick. Last time on the podcast back in November, we were talking about Bill Belichick's future and all that. You thought he'd be gone. Well, that happened. He's gone. Um, it's a new era now. You have a uh, uh, what's the coach? Jared, uh, Jared uh, yeah, Mayo, yeah. Jared Mayo, yeah. new head coach of the, yeah. of the Patriots. Um, Mac Jones is gone. Yeah, they drank, they definitely drink May. How do you feel about the Pats going to this uh, next season? So, this is going to sound contradictive, but they're going to stink, but they're going to be better. Um, that could happen. So, they get they their defense is going to be very good. Yeah, they're going to have an excellent defense. Um, their offense is going to be, I think, much better depending on who plays and whatnot. I'm of the belief that Drake may start day one. I don't care what anybody says. And my opinion is if you draft a kid at number three, he plays. Who's the backup? That's the way it goes. You know? Who's back? Who's the backup? Jacoby Brissett. But everyone says, okay. everyone, you know, there, there are a lot of people who are like, oh, you got to sit the kid. You got to sit the kid. You got to sit the kid. Sitting a kid on a team that's not going to be very good doesn't do him any good. Right. You know, when you're sitting behind Aaron Rodgers, you're going to learn something. You know, when, you know, Patrick Mahomes sat behind Alex Smith, good quarterback, you're going to learn something. Yeah. If you're sitting behind a good veteran, you're going to learn. When you're, when you're sitting there and the team isn't very good and the quarterback's, you know, a career backup, you're not going to learn anything. You're not going to improve. You're not going to get any better. The only way you're going to get better is you got to get your ass out there and you got to play. Yeah. You know? So I don't, I think even last year, they weren't a four win team. You know, I think they should have realistically won six or seven games. Um, their offense was just so bad. Mac Jones was so broken that he couldn't he couldn't get out of his own head. He couldn't get out of his own head. And I'm telling you right now, he's going to win a couple of games in Jacksonville this year. Mac Jones, watch. He'll hmm. get in there. He'll have to. You know, Lawrence will get hurt. Mac Jones will get in there, and he'll win a few games. That's a hot take. <laughs> but, um, but um, I, I do. I think I think they're going to be a lot better than like the the media and and, and people are giving them credit for. They got a tough schedule. Though. They have a yeah. brutal schedule. Like there's really, if you look at it on paper, there's no holes. <laughs> there's no so, holes. So what over under? I haven't seen over unders yet, but I imagine over under is like at least five and a half wins. I think the I think it's four and a half. Jesus. I think it's four and a That's half. Low. Yeah. I, I want to say it's four. Yeah. Oh my god. So, but well. um. You I don't agree with the defense will be good though. Defense will be really good. I should, should be yeah, still defense be pretty solid. Be good. You know, they got some you know, um, if the offensive line can be the offensive line actually got better towards the end of the year, it started to really get better. Mm -hmm. if, if they can keep the quarterback upright and they got a couple guys that can make some plays, I think they'll be competitive. You is know? there any is there any buzz though about the Pats though? I mean, um, any, any, there buzz? Is, any, any, all, any excitement? It's fresh, new. No, but it's all it's you know this area of the country. It's all about us. It's all about negativity and narrative, of course, and, and all that. You know, I mean, it was Belichick had to go. Belichick had to go. Belichick had to go. And for years, it was he doesn't hire any coaches. He doesn't. You know, he's not doing this. He's not doing that. Whatever. So, mm -hmm. new era begins. All get started. Gerard Mayo hires a, a huge coaching staff, but you know what? He didn't hire the right coaches. You know, he didn't hire later. You know, they all want him to hire one of those like young, hot shot, you know, um, West Coast offense or whatever it is they're running now. The, the McVeigh, the McVeigh offense, I guess. Yeah. Is what it's. Yeah. They all want him to hire one of them and, and and do this and that. You know, they hired Alex Van Pelt, and they're like, oh, you know, he just doesn't. I'm just not sold on him, blah, blah, blah. Well, you know, Alex Van Pelt was the offensive coordinator on a team that won 12 games last year with four different quarterbacks. You know, so let's let, let, let's not commit anybody of any crimes until they do them. And, you know, let, 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 let's give these, this team a chance to to grow. You know, they hired a, a huge coaching staff, which is good. Now it's they have too many coaches, which they, they, they turn that into – Oh, it's because Mayo's not confident in his ability, so he's relying on other people to do. It's just, it's so, it's so bad. It's but you just, are, but you are personally excited about the. Of course, Jeremy. I am. Uh, yeah, okay. I love football. I love football. Sorry, my catch. And, 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 and more specifically, with Jeremy Mayo, you, you, you're okay with the hire? I do, I, I do. Okay. I mean, and the thing is, you know, he's different. You know, like, like for years, like all the reporters would go down there and they couldn't ever get any information. Now they're getting information. And they don't know what to do with it. <laughs> they, they don't know what to do. They don't know how to. They're like, oh my god! Like he's actually giving us an answer. 
my my only thing my only thing is I, I just I just hope they give him a fair shake. Give him give him at, at oh, least three oh, years. He, give him at least give him at least three years. At least three years. The one, yeah, they will. The the one thing about the crafts, they're very loyal. They're very yeah. loyal. I have I mean, being from the area, I have a lot of friends that have worked for them. Mm-hmm. Um, I have good. I have one of my best friends right now. Worked for them for years. He actually started the Patriots Hall of Fame. He was one of the guys. Um, oh, okay, okay. That did that, and he um, uh, this is one thing he's always said. He's you know, they're cheap. He's like they're cheap. But um, but they they're loyal. They're loyal. They treat they treat their people well, and they you know so they're gonna give him at least three years. He's not gonna go anywhere. Right. He's not gonna go go anywhere. Right. All right. One last thing to get out of here. Um, WWE. Yeah. Um, so WrestleMania. Obviously, we haven't had a chance to talk since really you know at least at least publicly since. Uh, yeah, I get to, you. Last I, year. I, I actually was there night one. It was fantastic. Yeah, you were there night one. Yeah, my yeah, it was it was, a, it was a 50th birthday surprise for my cousin. He, he nice, me out there. nice. So would fun. you have, would, you, would you rather go on night one, night two? Looking back in hindsight, oh, I would have loved to have been a night two, obviously. But yeah, night one was night one was night one was good. We had a good. He's got to see the Rock though, wrestle. Yeah, that's what. Oh cool. yeah, I could see the Rock. You know, yeah. I mean, I could see the Rock years ago. You know, whatever. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I gotta tell um, you, being in that football stadium, it was cold. I it heard. Was, I kept saying it. it was cold, and, and they said that that this this the, the re- night one the the crowd wasn't was so out of it because, night one because it was so cold. Night two they were able to adjust. They adjusted, yeah, because it's a lot probably a lot of the same people if you right. think about it. But um, I gotta tell you, I have never been in a place so packed with sar- like you were like literally like sardines in there. It oh, wow. was stuffed. It was packed mm-hmm. to the hills, mm-hmm. and it was just. The production, just like everything, was just fantastic. I mean, you miss some of the cool stuff, the graphics and stuff like that, because you don't see them from TV. Yeah, of course. But it was, it was a hell of an experience. It was fun. I, I loved uh, it. That being said, I mean WrestleMania, obviously the hype going. I mean those, and the, I've been a wrestling fan for God almost forty years, and at least from January going into Mania. The hype, not just watching it as a fan, we can but also the, uh, the hype even from a casual because of the rock being back and the rock being the heel, the whole yeah. uh new final boss persona, which heightened the the, the whole yeah. thing and all that. Yeah. This is what's the most hype WrestleMania I think I've ever seen in quite a while, not ever. Yeah. Um, and then all of a sudden, for the last two months now, it's been kind of like a little lull now. Yeah, Cody, I, Cody, Cody with the title, and all of a sudden, it's a little lull. Yeah, I'm going to agree with you on that. Um, the best part about it was for once and for the first time I can remember in 40 years, or at least since since the internet became mm-hmm. prevalent, you really didn't know what was going to happen. It was right. fantastic. It was we, great. You know what I mean? You, you were getting surprised every week, and it was great. You know, I loved it. You're right. It was There was such a big lead up, even not even just the main event, like almost all the matches. You know what I mean? You know, the punk, CM Punk and Drew McIntyre stuff. And that was great. You know, even you know Rhea Ripley and Becky Lynch was good, and mm-hmm. it was just there was so much, it was so much good stuff. And then you're right, it kind of dipped off because, you know, they moved Cody off of Raw onto SmackDown to be the mm-hmm. champ. So, and then Roman, Rock, Seth, were all gone. Yeah, you know, what I mean, so three of the four big dogs were gone. You know, so it's kind of left to. You're right. It was kind of like a. It was kind of like a. You know, here to, to you know. I also feel like, to, to be season. fair, I, I also feel like, feel like it was that way because you're such a at a, such a high. Yeah, it's the way to go down. Yeah, so it's like yeah. a, an air in a balloon. All yeah. of a sudden, all, all these top stars around Cody are gone. The Seth is gone, and as you yeah. mentioned, all these guys are gone. You know, for injuries yeah. or whatever, maybe. So I get it, but I feel like now. So I know, and look, I didn't watch Clash of the Castle. Um, the entire event. Yeah. Um. But it feels like that we're starting to pick up now. Yeah, we're starting. To pick I mean, up like Friday night, SmackDown's in Chicago, and yeah. they've already like advertised. You know, CM Punk returns to Chicago. Blah blah blah. Is he cleared uh, to wrestle now? He's still, still waiting for that. No, I don't know if he's know. quite cleared yet, but I, I, he's going to be. He's going to be well enough to get a beat down from Drew McIntyre. Yeah, because you know that's what they're setting up. Yeah, you know McIntyre quits and all this other stuff the other night. You know, as part of a storyline, and then you know. Punk's going to be there, but I think I think McIntyre is going to come flying out of the crowd and give him a beat down. Yeah, so, yeah. Just set yeah. up for there, so that, you know he's supposed to be able to be cleared by SummerSlam. Yeah, so just, that, that, that that will likely be a SummerSlam match then, Drew and uh, yeah, CM. That's Park. what I think. Yeah, so th- that's, that's been great. That's been a great feud, though. I think <laughs> um, I want to say Money in the Bank. They're talking Roman returns. 
I think that's too soon, man. So, well, I too soon. I guess they want to start. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how they're going to do it. Unless they're building something behind that. Like, well, first of all, well, Roman come, is Roman come back as a heel or a face? That's the question. We don't know. Apparently, well, you know, I don't know. I, I don't know. You know what I mean? I mean, I don't know. I mean, I don't listen to the dirt sheets. So, yeah. you know, they don't, they don't, they don't, they don't ever get anything right. Anyway. Wait, you don't, you don't pay the 29 for Melter? You don't do that? I, I do not. <laughs> I no, I do not. And um he has me blocked actually. Well, Jeez. He's such but, a um, so does Sap. Sap has me blocked too. I've never and I've never I've never like Oh, did I tell you what Sap did to me a couple, about a month ago? No. So it's what what a sad sad ass he is. I'm, yeah, I'm saying on my podcast, he's a fucking sad ass. Sure. Go ahead. And, and, and I say as a guy who he's I mean, actually a really good he's actually a really good journalist. And and for him to, to go this route is sad. So I was crit- critical of him, I think. On, on some random post that he wasn't even tagged on, um, I think months ago. Yeah. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, he sends me a, a direct message saying, "This is you," and and and, and with the critic criticism of him yeah. ahead of him, it wasn't even anything that bad. But I'm like, dude, you really are that sad individual that you have to, you have to go dig around yeah. for a post that I post of you that you're not even involved in of yeah. some random. Yep. Yeah. I'm a nobody. You're a, a wrestling journalist who's let's be real. You don't like the guy, but he's very highly respected. Yeah, like, I don't go understand. that route, man. Come on, you. Sad. It's a sad. I don't route. understand why, because the way he acts is so bad. Yeah. That I, I mean, you talk. I mean, you have at least you have a podcast. You know what I mean? You have a podcast. Yeah. You have listeners. You have followers. Right. I'm just a schmuck, and he has me blocked. Right. Like, why? Because I'm friends with Duke. You know what I mean? It's like him, it's, him and Duke don't get along either. What? Him and oh, Duke don't get along. Yeah. No, they've had some good back and forth. Uh, back and he's, forth. He's, he's soft. He's S A W F. He is. It's, I, it's, I hope he hears this too. I mean, yeah, he's such a baby, yeah. and he just, it's the way I see the way he acts and the way he interacts with people. And I'm like, if I was your employer, I don't care if you're reporting on wrestling and you just, you're trying to act like you're a heel and stuff like that. Yeah. You'd be fired. Like if anybody if 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 I acted like that as a representative of my company, they'd fire me. Yeah, of course. One hundred percent. I'd be gone. Without 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 a doubt. You know? And he just doesn't like like he's he's like cruel and 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 he and he says things and he takes like personal shots at people and at the same time, he acts like he's this social justice warrior who's doing all sorts of things for good and stuff like that. Right. He's a scumbag. Yeah. You know, he's a scumbag. You know, yeah. I don't care if you don't like Billy Body. You don't start a fight with him in public. Right. Right. You know, I'm just yeah, an idiot, song. especially when the guy's got his kid around. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, it's just, it's, it's, I have no, no respect for those people. No, I don't. You know, I it's, don't. they just, I don't understand how they get away with what they do. And I don't understand how he has any respect. I really don't. So, so quickly, book. I mean, obviously, we're still about two months out. Well, maybe, maybe, maybe no, a little less than that. Actually, it's probably about a month and a half. How would you book SummerSlam going forward? Based on what you see right now, like we're gonna get obviously Punk and, and Drew. Yeah. Um. What, what about Cody? Because Cody, Cody's title reign has been kind of like you know he, he's had good matches. I, I mean, yeah. I, I'll give him that. But there's been nothing really. It's, of, I think of, it's gonna uh, be Cody. I think what's gonna happen is it's gonna be Cody against Solo. Okay. And I think that's when Roman comes back and gives Cody a beatdown. Right. That's what I think. That's what I think they're going to do. Is I think they're kind of setting up for, you know, which I, 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 as much as I like Solo, I think, it, you know, it's too early to have him lose on a big stage like that. Yeah. You know, but that's what's been, that's what I think is going to happen. I mean, I've seen <laughs> Punk McIntyre. Um, it's probably going to be Priest against Gunther, which I take the, I like Damian Priest a lot, but it's not working. Take the, he's not ready. I actually think he needs to be uh, a, a baby face, like a like 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 a like a true baby face, and he'll get over. I will you know? say the the money in the bank, though, know, because that, that's the next paper PLE coming up. We'll have a, a little bit of a, a tell where we're going. Yeah. And it's yeah, he's fighting, I mean, maybe they give the belt to Rollins. You know, maybe they maybe they give it back to him. He came back on on, on Monday, but he didn't look like he was healthy either. No, well, yeah, he, he's probably not going to wrestle. We, money in the bank's what two weeks away. Something like that. I, I think so. It's early, early, early July. I know that. Yeah. So you know he's he's still got some time, but yeah, we'll see. 
But we'll figure all that, man. She should be. She, I, I think now that you know we're, we're Mania's in the rearview mirror now. We got past through all, all the you know yeah. smaller PLEs. You know the, the Saudi show backlash. Yeah. Which by the way, was kind of weird. Since Mania, all the PLEs since Mania has been overseas. One, all one PM all, overseas. One PM starts. Yeah. So I love but, it. But, oh my god. Well, I, you love I, it, but I work on Saturdays. And I, I'm at home to like four or five o'clock in the afternoon, so I miss yeah. it. But that's yeah. I come home early, you know what I'm saying? So, yes. I, I mean, I don't hate it if I'm home to watch it. But yeah, no, I know. I, 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 I like, 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 if there was, oh, we're going to bring WrestleMania to London. Oh, my God. If WrestleMania started at two o'clock, no, can't do it. Can't do so. it. At least, you know, yeah. At least, though, you know, they have the shows on Saturdays now. At least the PLA is on Saturdays. Thank God. Yeah. yeah. No Wrestle, shows. WrestleMania will never, ever again be outside in a cold weather area. No, they, I think they're, they're, they're going to do it outside. It's going to be on the West Coast. It's going to be and, Florida. It's going to be somewhere warm, um, or they're going to bring it inside because I yeah, think they, they I have think to. They, they have to. I mean, it's not like it wouldn't. People would still go, but but it affects the overall product in the moment. The wrestlers, like, less noise it, and it's, all that. It's, yeah. it's literally it's a health risk for the wrestlers at that point. That too. Yeah. When, it's, when it's that cold outside, you know they they have a chance to get hurt. They have right. a chance to get hurt. Absolutely, absolutely. Anyway. Danny G, my man, plug plug it your uh, social media, plug uh, appearances on the podcast. I'm, I'm, I'm at Wicked Smart on, on on X or Twitter, whatever we call it now. Um, you know, like I said, I just I just try to talk. You know, I mean, I don't I don't troll too much. I don't. You know, people want to talk to me, talk to me. If you don't want to, don't. I'm not going to hide. It's actually a picture of me that's on there. You know, I'm not hiding behind an emoji or a bitmoji or anything like that. Yeah. So you know, I don't care. People insult me all the time. I don't take it personally. It is it, it is what it is. By the way, uh, you, I saw you hung up with Duke last week at at, uh, at Fenway. Well, yeah, we went to Savannah Bananas. I helped him do media. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, yeah, it was fun. It was. Fun. How short is how, how short is Duke? I'm not, that's not I'm not at liberty to say. Oh, he can't. He, oh my god! <laughs> but I'll just tell you. I'll just tell you. I'm six two. So okay. I know it's he he is funny. He sent the picture to his um to his girlfriend Michelle, and she was mm-hmm. like. Oh my God! It's like you have a bodyguard. That was there. <laughs> he might so, need one. He yeah. might need one. There. <laughs> yeah, I know. So the one thing I will say, real quick, before we go, like yeah. about Savannah Bananas. Now I'm not. The the game itself isn't really for me. Right. The experience was fantastic. Um, I would go. I would definitely go. I would definitely go if you ever get a chance to bring your family. EJ, go for it. Okay. Um, I would definitely. You know. Is this, it's a game? Is this a competitive game? But it's not a real game. You know, there's music always playing and stuff. They tour the country, right? They're touring the country now, yeah. Right. But they still play in Savannah, um, uh, like two or three, um, like I want to say, like maybe four dates a month, okay, something like that. But their home field, they sold off for like two years in Savannah. It's crazy, but um, but now they're touring the country. They're doing like stadiums, like they did over sixty thousand in Houston. That's crazy. Anyway, it was banged out. Um, it's about the experience and it is fun. And the one thing being so close to the plays is being Duke where I couldn't believe yeah. how big they were. And this is like the baseball version of the, of the Globe Trotters, right? It's like the baseball version of the Globe Trotters. Yeah. And the same okay. thing. These guys were all, everyone we talked to, they all played division one college baseball, played in the minor leagues and stuff, but now they're just having a blast dancing, catching fly balls while doing backflips. Yeah, I've heard it before in the past, but I never really, never really knew so, much until like you guys went this past yeah. weekend. Like, okay, was fun, yeah, but yeah, but dude, yeah, he was, you know, he's, he, I know that picture. Everyone's like, oh my god, <laughs> what a, he's he's a character, isn't he? Good I mean, boy. I'm a I'm a I'm a I'm a big guy. You know what I mean? I'm 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 six two two twenty five. You know what I mean? So you know, yeah, absolutely. Anyway, dude, awesome show as always. Awesome podcast. Thank you, Talk sir. To you soon, man. Good work. Are you still taking a little break? Or? No, I'm yeah, I'm, a pace, I'm, I'm pacing myself. Pace yourself. Pacing yeah. myself. Yeah. I'm, 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 not gonna go, I'm not gonna go crazy. That's like yeah. I normally do during the cool. how, how hot is it down there? Uh right now it is eight, well, today was like 85, 87, oh, 88. It's, it's up it's it's in the nineties up here. It's hot. Yeah, it, it was not it, it's been a rough uh it's been a really rough um um the weather's been really weird the last couple of weeks, to be honest with you, with the yeah. rain the last couple of days and um you know that. So yeah, it's been it's been the weather's been kind of weird. So yeah. Hands it up. All right, buddy. Good job, Take brother. Well, enjoy. Say hi you to Rob for me. You got it, man. Take it easy, brother. You got it. <laughs> Later.
Mm-hmm.